Hi everybody, welcome to another video in Calculus 2, section 10.7. Uh, in this section, we study two more tests for a series to determine if a series is convergent or divergent. Right. Uh, we spend the whole next section talking about all the tests that we have, so I'm not going to review. Just jump right into it. Uh, this section we have two tests, two more tests, ratio test and the root test. So the ratio test. Uh, so first, if we have a series, uh, for this one doesn't have to be positive or negative. Because when we check the ratio, ratio of a of k plus 1 over a of k, so both of these terms come from the same series. Uh, in contrast to comparison test, we have two series and we divide term by term. On this one, we divide consecutive terms of the same series. And we have the absolute values, so we don't have to worry about when it's positive or negative. Right. When we do that, uh, this will be the rest will be simple. Once we find the limit, if it's less than one, the series is convergent. Converges absolutely therefore converge if r greater than 1 including infinity the series diverges and when r equal to 1 it is inconclusive so we just find the ratio uh, I mean not the ratio find r the limit as k go to infinity the ratio of consecutive terms in absolute values so the next term divided by this term pretty much right uh, note the ratio test is useful when we have this kind of terms. Uh, usually when we have the power of k here, uh, we can also use the root test, but not the next part of the section. Right. First, uh, we look at this uh, first example here. Uh, so we just find the ratio. Uh, so usually uh, when we have a series, uh, let's just write out what is a of k. is going to be 10 to the k and k factorial right to a half factorial uh, by definition k factorial is equal to k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 so the products the product of the numbers starting from k on the integers from k on the way back to 1 So, a sub k is equal to that. Now, we will check the ratio. Uh, let r be the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k plus 1 over a sub k in absolute values. So first, all we do is we put k plus 1 instead of k. So if we have uh, a sub k, we have k 10 to the k and k factorial. Here we just put k plus 1 there instead. So we have 10 to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial. Don't forget there's the limit. That is a sub k plus 1 over a sub k will be just that term. Right. Uh, divide fraction is multiplied reciprocal. 10 to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial multiply reciprocal k factorial 10 to the k right now 10 to the k this is easy 10 to the k uh, 10 to the k plus 1 is 10 to the k times 10 to the first Uh, 
uh, for this term, I can write as 10 to the k times 10 to the first. Because when we multiply two things with the same basis, we add the exponents. So k plus 1 gives us that. Next, k plus 1 factorial. What is that? So, uh, k plus 1 factorial, if we write it down, uh, this is k factorial. So, k plus 1 factorial, if we write it down, it is k plus 1, and each factor is 1 less than the previous one. So, k plus 1 minus 1 is going to be k and then k minus 1. So we'll be check it's 1 less than the previous one and all the way back to 2 and then 1. Right, so that is k plus 1 factorial. Now, all of this is k factorial. So we say k plus 1 factorial is equal k plus 1 times k factorial. Right. Uh, let's look at an example. 10 factorial. We can write as 10 times 9 times 8 on the way back to 1, right? If we want to, we can just take any factorial, like from here, that is 8 factorial. So 10 factorial is equal to 10 times 9 times 8 factorial. Or we can also say it. 9 back to 1, that is 9 factorial. So 10 factorial is 10 times 9 factorial. Yeah, so the same idea here. K plus 1 factorial. We start from K plus 1. And then K, K minus 1 on the way back to 1. But that is just k factorial. So, k plus 1 factorial is k plus 1, then multiply by k factorial. If it's not clear enough, uh, we can put the parentheses around this. So the factorial only apply to k, and the k plus 1 is an extra product. That's why we can write like this the product here. Right. Uh, k factorial and 10 to the k will be still there. Right. Let's simplify. 10 to the k, 10 to the k cancel out. k factorial cancel out. So we have 10 over k plus 1. At this point, absolute values are not is irrelevant because k go to infinity and k plus 1 suddenly being positive. So a positive number, absolute values are not, it doesn't matter. And also, what doesn't matter if it's positive or negative because we have a finite number, the bottom is infinity, finite divided by infinity, where there's positive or negative, still goes to zero, right? So this one, uh, we can say that uh, it is equal to a finite over infinity, so which is equal to zero. Now, the ratio test say if it is less than zero, it is convergent. So, uh, less than one. Uh, let's, just, let's just write. In this particular case, r equal to 0, which is less than 1, which implies the series is convergent. And it is convergent absolutely. 
meaning if we have an absolute value, it's still convergent. Without it, it's still convergent. So, right. So, simple as that. Next, uh, we have this example. Still the same thing. Uh, first, write out what is a sub k. Because after that, we write out the ratio, and it's useful to know what is a sub k. k to the k over k factorial. Right. Uh, we'll find define the ratio r. So the ratio of consecutive terms, absolute values as k go to infinity. Right. So put k plus one uh, into k. So we have k plus one instead of k. So we have k plus 1 to the k plus 1. And then k plus 1 factorial. Right. And then k factorial, uh, k to the k and k factorial. Our uh, divide fraction is multiply reciprocal. And then multiply reciprocal, k factorial over k to the k. Right, k plus 1 to k uh, plus 1. Uh, so we cannot really break down k plus 1, but uh, we can take care of the power. So k plus 1 to the k, and then times k plus 1 to the first. So that will take care of the k plus 1 to the first power. And then at the bottom we have k plus 1 times k factorial. Uh, we talked about that earlier. And then we have k factorial and then k to the k. Right. See what can we simplify? K factorial cancel out. K plus one cancel out. And that's what we left with. Since both of them have the K power, we can bring that in inside the K power of K. Since both of them have the k power, we bring that inside of k. Next, uh, because all of k is positive, and so this is going to be positive anyway, so I will drop the absolute values. So we don't need the absolute values. Uh, what we're doing, and then I'll split k over k plus 1 over k to the k. Hmm. 
fine. So when we do that, we end up with limit as k goes to infinity, k over k is 1, and 1 over k to the k. I think we did enough problem to know that this is equal to e. That is the definition of e, right? Just write a little note here. Since k is positive, all of these are positive. We don't need absolute values. That is equal to e by definition of e. Right now, since the ratio is equal to e, which is greater than one, we conclude that. The series bigger than one diverges. So if the series diverges, series diverges, there's no absolute or conditional. So uh, simple enough. Next we have k cube over 3 to the k. Right. So first, uh, let a sub k be k cube over 3 to the k. And then we find all As k goes to infinity, right? A of k plus one, put k plus one here. And then over 3 to the k plus 1 over a sub k right. multiply reciprocal. to the k k cube right next uh, k cube k plus 1 cube cannot really do anything with that yet of course we can multiply it out if we want to but we don't need to we can multiply this out k plus 1 the case plus 1 the case plus 1 but don't need to do that so we're just going to leave k plus 1 cube. Next, 3 to the k plus 1 is 3 to the k, 3 to the first. When we multiply it, add the exponent. 3 to the k, k cube. So 3 to the k, that's what we're left with. Now, we have 3 at the bottom, right? 
and then k plus 1 cube and then k cube because this is cube this is not to the k power if this is k power different story but it is just k so I will pull both of them inside Let's have 1 over 3 and then both of them pull inside the cube. Right. And of course at this stage you can drop the absolute values if you don't want uh, don't want to write it. So we still have one third. Now k plus one over k, we can do like the last problem. We split. All right, I drop the absolute values because it's positive. Step so one third. K over K is 1, 1 over K cube. Now, because this is the finite powers, but completely different things, but 1 over K, when K go to infinity, go to 0. So we have 1 third times 1 cube. If this is 1 to infinity, that is indeterminate. But since this is not infinity on the exponent, this is just 1, which is 1 third. And this is less than 1. If it is less than 1, the series is convergent. Absolutely. Be just like that. Uh, before we go to the next example, let's just look at what we did. So we have 10 to the k, k vectorial, k to the k, k vectorial, 3 to the k, and k cube. So if compared to the ranking that we have earlier, I think about this. We have the exponential and then factorial. So the smaller or the one that it goes lower on the top, it will be convergent. Next, we have this. The slower is at the bottom. Divergent. This one. Power and exponential. Power slower than exponential. So that one, exponential, is going to be goes faster to infinity than k cube. So three, in this case it's just say uh, k cube, 3 to the k. So we have the bigger on the go faster to infinity to the bottom, convergent. This one, uh, 10 to the k exponential, goes to infinity uh, slower than Factorial, factorial bigger, faster to infinity to the bottom, convergent. On this one, k factorial is slower than k to the k. The one faster on the top, divergent. Faster at the bottom, divergent. And that's, that's the reason for that. Uh, that that's why this uh, will come in handy. One more time. Right. How about this? By the way, before we do anything, this one, if we use uh, the P-series test, P equal to 2, convergent, without do anything, right? But uh, since we put this under the, the question, ask us to use the ratio test, uh, maybe we just use the ratio test here. Actually, we should use the ratio test here, where the terms are 1 over k squared. Right, so we take the, uh, we find R.
ace of k plus 1. So put 1, k plus 1 into k. And then divide just a of k. Multiply reciprocal. And pull both of them, both of them inside the square, because both of them have a square power. we may or may not have absolute values. It doesn't matter because uh, the square is positive for sure. So we don't really need absolute values here. Actually, it's not that bad if we multiply this out. Though. Like uh, if we have k square on the top, the bottom k plus 1 square, why don't we just multiply it out? Uh, so k square, k plus 1 square is k square plus 2k plus 1. Right. But for usually for this kind of problem, you can just say since k go to infinity, k is a lot bigger than 1. So this one, we just drop the 1 here if we want to. So k square over k square, or just 1 square, which is 1. Anyway, I think this one is better. It's not that bad to multiply it out. We can do the same thing at this step if we don't want to to split. You can just say for that one, uh, since k is bigger than 1, so we just ignore 1. So we have k over k, which is 1. Don't even need to do that. Or we can multiply it out like this. So there are a lot of things we can do. Uh, here we multiply it out. And we'll take the higher power. Highest power on the top, highest power at the bottom. Equal to 1. So, or like I mentioned before, or for something like this, later on then you can just say this equal to limit at k go to infinity. Since k go to infinity, plus 1 is still k. So this is the same thing as that, which is still 1. Though. You can just go ahead and write like that. But in this case, the focus here is uh, the ratio is equal to 1. So if it is equal to 1, it is inconclusive. But note that, as mentioned before, the series is convergent because that is the P series where P equal to 2. So it is convergent by P series, where P equal to 2. Right. So the ratio test doesn't help. But uh, P series test help. Yeah. So that's why we need to know all of those rules. Right. The root test. Root test kind of like the ratio test. Uh, but instead of taking the ratio of consecutive terms, you take the k root of absolute values of a to the k as k go to infinity. So that row, this is the Greek letter R. If it's less than 1, it's 
converge convergent greater than one divergent equal to one inconclusive so it's exactly like what we have in the ratio test right so the root test is helpful where we have the whole thing raised to the k exponent because the root and the power root and the exponent cancel out Uh, when we see a problem like this with the power of k, this if we have the power of k, this if we have power of k, that's useful to use the root test. By the way, I would argue the ratio test is a lot better on this one. Yeah, just use the ratio test here instead. Right. Ratio test, this one, uh, exponential and power. Exponential go faster to infinity than the power. So exponential on the top, faster to infinity. The term faster to infinity and on the top, it will be divergent without doing anything. But get there in a minute. Right. For this one, obviously, when we see the k power like this, use the ratio test. I mean, sorry, use the root test because the root uh, and the power cancel out. Root and exponent cancel out. A sub k, uh, it's going to be that. By that I mean without the power of k. What? What do we write? The form. Right. The whole thing. So. Yes, including the power here. That's a sub k. Next, we define rho to be the limit as k goes to infinity the k root so that's why we call this the root test a sub k and to make sure that sometimes this could be negative we put an absolute values there because absolute uh, square root of negative number is undefined imaginary yeah so once again this is convergent absolutely because we do have the absolute values there right so 4k square my 3 over 7k square plus 6 to the k power and that is the reason we use the root test because the k power here cancel with that k. Right. Now that's too easy. As k go to infinity, the highest power, only highest power terms matter. And can you have a case where we have four by seven? Which is equal four by seven. So what happens if rho is less than one? Just like the ratio test, the series is convergent. When it's less than one, it is convergent. Uh, absolutely. Right, so that the problem. Now, uh, we will not do this, but I just say the scenario, let's say instead of k, let's say we have 2k, or we might have something like 
I just changed the problem. What if we have this problem instead? Same thing as that. To the 2K. Right? And what do we do? By the way, if we have something to the 2K, uh, we might have the same thing. Let's say B. Worry about that later. Now let's just look at the, the ratio test. So we'll take the k root of that. Now, when we do this, uh, when we have uh, a root and exponent like this, power will be on the top root at the bottom. So 2k divided by k is just 2. So when we do that, uh, row is equal to the limit as k go to infinity of 4k squared minus 3 over 7k squared plus 6 square because 2k divided by k, k and k cancel out. Here we have k divided by k which is 1. So if we have 2k uh, that's fine. Still take the k power, uh, the, the root of k, and then power on the top, root at the bottom, k and k cancel out. Right. So potentially, uh, by the way, this uh, the limit is, will be 4 over 7 square, uh, still less than 1, so it's still convergent. Still good. Right. Right. Finally, if we have something, let's say k and then square again. That is going to be b to the 2k because power to another power, we can multiply the, the power together. So, break down into this scenario as well. So, yeah, I thought I just want to uh, do that. So, in case we have something that is different than k, we still take the k root and we still do this. Right, next, do that. By the way, we did mention that uh, 2 to the k exponential go faster to infinity than the power at the bottom. Faster on the top, this will be divergent because it goes too fast uh, to infinity. Or we can say, the right, anyway. Now this we use the root test though, so let's use the root test. The ratio test will be a lot easier, but that's not what we do. All right. 2 to the k, k to the 10 power. All right. Root test. Root test. Uh, I even forgot the absolute values on this problem. But uh, absolute values here irrelevant. Because those are positive, those are positive, so we don't don't have to worry about that. Right. But let's just put absolute values here. Right. Right. We did say that this uh, this series divergent because uh, the faster term on the top.
I will rob the absolute valves because it is in the way. I don't know why I write K Victoria out of nowhere. And what can we do with this? Yeah, better on the gameplay. All right, so what can we do with this? So both of them have the root of K, so when we split the root, Then we have K to the 10 to the K root. Right. I should write this before, but uh, if we have something to the M power and take the N root, power on top, root at the bottom. That is very important. So in here we just say two power on top, root at the bottom. So that two to the first, or they just cancel out. And here we have k to the ten over k. K over K is 1, right? So 2. And here we have K to the 10 over K. Right. What's that? What is the limit of that when K go to? Right. By the way, K go to infinity. And 10 over k, so we have infinity to the zero power. Right. So the top is 2, so what will be the bottom? So what is the limit of that? With now we just take k to the 10 over k. So, uh, quick review, infinity to zero power, which what we have in this case is indeterminate. So in that case, we will let y equal to it, and we'll take ln on both sides. Uh, just do the limit first. in the LN. We can take the exponent outside. Uh, I can multiply the LN of K on top. Right, the Hubble rule. So on the limit, you see the Hubble rule. The derivative of the top, L and K is uh, one over K. The derivative of K is one.
so that simplified to 10 over k divided by 1 is itself so just this right so when k go to infinity finite divided by infinity so this one equal to 0 so ln of y go to 0 So y equal to e to the 0 power, which is 1. Now in here we have 1, which is 1. Substitute back in here. So 2 over 1, which is 2. And since the row bigger than 1, it is divergent, right? So the series diverges. Right. As we said before, right? The term faster on the top divide by the slower term at the bottom uh, that will be divergent All right next we have this one by the way we seen this just earlier right it will take the limit of this when k go to infinity that's one equal to e so what happens if the k term does not go to zero so for this one we know that for sure If the k terms does not go to zero, by the divergent test, this is divergent. So we know for sure this is divergent, because when k go to infinity, that one does not go to zero. We know for sure it is divergent. But still use the root test here, because unlike the last problem, uh, this is convenient to use the root test with that k, right? So, uh, let rho equal to limit the k root and have to write out what is a of k right. So we have a of k is that term, so we have absolute values of a of k values 1 plus 1 over k to the k right since this is positive the absolute values is not necessary and when we do this we can just say power on top root at the bottom k over k is 1, or earlier we did say they just cancel out. Right. If they don't cancel out, the power over index of radical. Anyway, so the k cancel out, we have limit k go to infinity of 1 plus 1 over k. This is simple, right? As k go to infinity, finite over infinity is zero. So here we just have one plus zero, which is one. Right. Now r equal to one. Rho equal to one. It is inconclusive. So in this example. If we use the ratio test, it is inconclusive. However, we did mention before, if we just take the limit of a sub k, as k go to infinity, it is not equal to zero, so it is divergent by the divergent test. Right. Note. 
limit of h of k as k goes to infinity is equal to we did do this earlier it is equal to e which is not equal to zero so the series divergent by divergent test diverges by divergent test So, uh, we have this example along with uh, that example. It shows that sometimes the root test and the ratio test is inconclusive. In that case, if we want to determine if it is divergent or convergent, we have to use different tests. So, like I said, we should, that's why we need to know all the, the tests because one test may not work and one test is rather obvious compared to the other test. Like this one, if we use the ratio test, it will be a lot easier than to do like this. Right. So, uh, in the next section, we'll review all the tests uh, for convergence and divergence. Uh, so, with that, for the next section, I'm going to stop the video here. As always, thank you for watching.